The six hours of Imola was a fantastic race. There was almost constant action across the hypercar and LMGT3 categories as the Italian circuit played host to one of the greatest races in the World Endurance Championship. In this race review, I'll be breaking down all the details regarding the 2024 edition of the Six Hours of Imola. This race marked the first time that the WEC came to the Imola circuit, and the first time we saw top-level endurance racing prototypes at this track since 2011 when LMP1 cars raced here in the Intercontinental Le Mans Cup. Qualifying would set the grid for the race, with the results in hypercar acting like a dream come true for the Tifosi, as Ferrari would line up first, second, and third. Italian racer Antonio Fiocco would lead the way in the number 50 Ferrari from pole position, followed by the customer Ferrari and the Le Mans winning number 51 car. The Porsches, Toyotas, and the remaining hypercars would follow the Ferraris towards Tamburello, but unfortunately a major crash would happen in the back of the hypercar field. The entries involved in this incident included the two Alpines, the 94 Peugeot, the 15 BMW, and the number 11 Isotta Fraschini. The 15 BMW, 36 Alpine, and 94 Peugeot needed to head into the pit lane for repairs, but it was the number 15 BMW that was hit with the worst damage, and eventually it did rejoin the track, but was many laps down. So as the race progressed out in front, it was Ferrari leading 1-2-3, with the number 6 Porsche in 4th, and the number 7 Toyota completing the top 5. During this time, the 499Ps showed really strong pace against the rival hypercars, and to the delight of Italian fans, Ferrari were occupying all podium positions. Hopefully, they would stay there, although it was a very long race to go. In the LMGT3 class, the number 92 Manti Porsche continued to lead this race from pole position. However, it definitely had competition, especially from the number 46 and number 31 BMW M Team WRT entries. Besides the BMWs and number 92 Porsche, the Aston Martin Vantage GT3 showed some decent pace, and the same goes for the Ferrari 296 GT3. One manufacturer that didn't have a good day in LM GT3 was Lamborghini. The Iron Dames race ended prematurely when the number 85 Lamborghini was forced to retire. The number 60 Iron Lynx Lamborghini ended up coming home in P13. But overall, it was a difficult race for Lamborghini in LMGT3. On the other hand, in Hypercar, Lamborghini was doing pretty good with their new LMDH car. The SC63 seemed to be more competitive than the previous event, and at times was fighting for a top 10 position. I would call this an improvement considering this is just the third race in endurance racing for the Lamborghini SC63 and the Imola circuit seemed to suit the SC63 more than the race in Qatar. It's also worth mentioning that unfortunately, the number 88 Ford Mustang GT3 encountered a problem where the diffuser was coming off the car. The Team Proton competition called their entry into the pit lane for repairs, but surprisingly, later on, this same issue appeared on the number 88 car once again. This is also not the first time that parts came loose off the Ford Mustang GT3. At the Rolex 24 at Daytona and IMSA earlier this year, the trunk came loose on multiple occasions. However, even though these are problems, we do need to remember that the Ford Mustang GT3 is brand new to endurance racing competition in 2024, and I'm confident that these issues will be resolved. Back up in the hypercar category after a round of pit stops, the Le Mans winning number 51 Ferrari was now in the race lead, followed by the number 6 Porsche and number 7 Toyota. Ferrari, even though they qualified first, second, and third, were definitely feeling competition from the likes of Porsche Penske and Toyota Gazoo Racing. I also want to point out that around this time, Nick DeVries pulled off an incredible overtake for second position in the number 7 Toyota. When the full course yellow was ending, right when it turned green, the number 7 Toyota driver was able to jump Miguel Molina on the exit of the chicane and get ahead of the number 50 Ferrari. This was pretty impressive from Nick DeVries, who used his experience to good advantage. But then, things changed drastically when the rain started to appear about halfway through the race. Strategy would be crucial, and whichever team got it right would ultimately have the best chance at winning. When the rain was coming down, the majority of hypercar entries came into the pit lane for wet tires, 
except the number 5 Porsche Penske entry and the 3 Ferrari 499Ps. The reason why these cars stayed out was because they were expecting the rain to not last long, and if the cars could outlast this and survive the rain period, they could potentially gain a huge advantage on their rivals. This was definitely a risky move that could either pay out in glory or heartbreak, and unfortunately, it was the latter option. As the rain continued and the track conditions became even more poor, Porsche Penske Motorsport decided to bail on their strategy for the number 5 Porsche and come into the pit lane with that car for wet tires. However, the three Ferraris continued on. Realizing it wasn't working out, many laps later, Ferrari A of Corsa also decided to pit their hypercars for wet tires, but unfortunately, the damage was done. Once the three Ferrari 499Ps came out of the pit lane, instead of in 1st and 2nd and 3rd, they were now in 6th, 7th, and 8th. To the disappointment of many, Ferrari's strategy didn't work out, and unfortunately, they lost out to their rivals Toyota and Porsche. With the Ferraris down the order, the leaderboard now displayed the number 7 Toyota at the top of the timesheets, with the number 6 Porsche in 2nd and the number 8 Toyota in 3rd. Surprisingly, the number 20 BMW, run by Team WRT, had jumped into 4th position, and was only a few seconds away from the podium sitting number 8 Toyota. The BMW M Hybrid V8 was suiting this Imola circuit a lot more than the Qatar event. This was definitely a better race for BMW M Team WRT, and if it wasn't for the chaos at the start, the number 15 BMW may have been up in the top 10 as well. During this time, the number 20 BMW was showing very strong pace and catching Brendan Hartley in the number 8 Toyota for third position, as BMW Team WRT were seeking their first podium in the WEC hypercar class. This was definitely strong pace from the BMW M Hybrid V8, especially considering that this car made its WEC hypercar debut just one race ago. Alas though, this 20 BMW went off the track at Ravazza at turn 17, and unfortunately wasn't able to challenge the number 8 Toyota from that point onward. Now so far in this video, I've mentioned all but one Italian manufacturer on the grid, and considering this is an Italian event, it would be a shame for me to not mention Isotto Fraschini. This event was another learning race for Isotto Fraschini Duquesne, as they continued to progress in hypercar. And while they made steps forward, it wasn't totally an easy race out there. There were a few driver errors out on track, which did cost time. But to be fair to these drivers, these were very difficult conditions to drive in. Even the more experienced prototype drivers were going off track at times. One positive achievement secured during this weekend was that the Tipo 6 LMHC was able to survive for 6 hours straight till the end of the race, and it didn't suffer any major reliability issues. That fact right there shows me that Isotto Fraschini are making progress in the WEC, and hopefully they continue to do so as we head into the next round of Spa. The Imola race continued, and once again the LMGT3 class was impressive, but in the lead was no longer the number 92 Manti Pure Racing Porsche. It had lost out during the strategy games during the rain, and the Team WRT BMW entries had jumped the Porsche. As the race neared its final hour, the two BMW entries actually started to battle for the race lead. Maxine Martin in the number 46 BMW and Augusto Farfus in the 31 BMW would go side by side for multiple corners. Eventually, the 31 car would get ahead of the chicane. Although, unfortunate news followed for the number 46 car, as it would receive a penalty. This resulted in dropping the 46 BMW out of contention for the win. Thankfully though, the 46 car would maintain a podium position, and the only car that would finish ahead would be the other team entry, the number 31 BMW. Around this time, the number 99 Proton Competition Porsche stopped at Variante Alta with a suspected MGU issue. This, in fact, was our only mechanical retirement out on track, but still an unfortunate day in hypercar for Proton Competition. As the race was concluding, we got to see some very exciting minutes of an intense chase down between the number 6 Porsche and the number 7 Toyota. French racer Kevin Estra in the number 6 Porsche Penske was hunting down Komui Kobayashi in the number 7 Toyota, who was also trying to make it to the flag in first position with enough fuel. Estra was putting in a phenomenal stint, 
one that deserved him and Porsche Penske Motorsport the race win of the six hours of Imola. However, the Toyota had an upside. This was because the number six Porsche Penske had a five second time penalty. And so even if Estra, who was closing on Kobayashi in the number seven Toyota by almost a second per lap, got past the number seven Toyota, it still wouldn't be enough for the number six Porsche to win the race. Since Kobayashi is a great defender, and there's not many overtaking opportunities on the Imola circuit, Estra was not able to get past and build a five second gap. And so at the end, it would be the number seven Toyota that would cross the line in first with Komui Kobayashi, Nick DeVries, and Mike Conway taking Toyota Gazoo Racing to victory lane for the first time in 2024. There were celebrations at Toyota Gazoo Racing as the team fully deserved this victory. The number seven crew completed an almost flawless race. Porsche Penske Motorsport, I'm sure, were a little disappointed to miss out on the win, especially in a battle like that with a fast car as the 963, but ultimately they still achieved a very phenomenal result. The number six Porsche would come home in second position with the sister car, the number five, also on the podium. It was once again a double podium for the fantastic Porsche Penske Motorsport team. There were also celebrations in the camp of Team WRT in LMGT3, as Augusto Farfus, Darren Leon, and Sean Galel brought the number 31 WRT BMW to victory lane in LMGT3. It was a BMW 1-2 with a 46 car in second, and the number 92 championship leader Manti Pure Racing Porsche in third. This win in LMGT3 also meant that BMW secured their first win in the World Endurance Championship, so huge congratulations to them. Following this incredible six hours of Imola race, the number six Porsche Penske continues its lead in hypercar with 56 points to its name. The number seven Toyota has now jumped into second place in the championship with the sister number five Porsche Penske just one point behind the Toyota in third. The number 12 Hertz team Jota Porsche is in fourth, followed by the number 50 Ferrari completing the top five. In LMGT3, it's still the number 92 Manti Pure Racing Porsche at the top, with the number 31 Team WRT BMW now in second after this historic win in Imola. The 27 Heart of Racing Aston Martin is in third, with the sister BMW, the number 46 car, in fourth position and completing the top five is the 777 D-Station Aston Martin. So that concludes my 2024 Six Hours of Imola race review. Next up in the WEC is the Six Hours of Spa, held at the legendary Spa Francochamps circuit in Belgium. What did you make of the Six Hours of Imola? Was it an entertaining race? Well, as always, let me know all your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, I suggest subscribing. The reason why is because I make endurance racing content mainly on WEC and IMSA every week. And if you want to watch more videos, there's options on your screen. But for now, that's it from me. I'll see you in the next one.